Greetings. Pull up a seat and join me for this week's Noir Alley. I'm at bar 355 in downtown Oakland, California. Not far from where I'm currently hosting the final weekend of my Noir City Film Festival. It's 21st edition here in the Bay Area. Today, I am toasting a favorite among Noiristas, multi-talented Ida Lupino. She stars in Woman in Hiding, made it universal in 1950 a year that was a crucial juncture in Lupino's career. She was 32 years old and had been acting in pictures for 19 years, having come to Hollywood as a teenager from her native England at the dawn of talking pictures. She soon showed herself to be one of the most versatile performers in the business. She also showed a desire for independence, which kept her from signing an exclusive contract with Warner Brothers, although that's where she made most of her best films in the 1940s. Lupino hit her peak of popularity with The Man I Love and Roadhouse, in which she was every inch the glamorous movie star. But that image didn't sit well with her. By the end of the decade, inspired by socially conscious producers like Stanley Kramer and Robert Rawson, Lupino wanted to make her own movies. She and her husband, Collier Young, formed a company called The Filmmakers, intent on telling stories Hollywood typically shied away from. For starters, in 1949, she co-wrote and produced Not Wanted about a young woman's unwanted pregnancy. When the film's director, Elmer Clifton, suffered a heart attack several days into production, Lupino took over, making her the first woman to write, produce, and direct a Hollywood feature. Out of respect, she left Clifton's name on the film, his last directing credit. But the die was cast. Lupino now preferred directing to performing. When studios came to her with acting jobs, she had little interest, but she still needed to make a living, especially if she wanted to make her own films. Well, given all this, Woman in Hiding was a project for which Lupino had no enthusiasm. It was based on a Saturday evening post serial called Fugitive from Terror, the kind of keyed up melodrama that Lupino as a filmmaker was eager to subvert. The story was a twist on the homicidal husband featured in films like Gaslight, Suspicion, Conflict, and The Suspect. It was adapted by Roy Huggins, who was just starting a career that would see him become one of the most prominent and influential writer-producers in television. The final script by Oscar Saul is really good. It has unexpected nuance and some nice plot twists. Lupino was cajoled into making it because the studio agreed to cast two of her friends, Bruce Bennett and Ronald Reagan, as her husband and the other man. But Reagan crashed a private party at Lupino's house to assert that the Writers Guild was infested with communists, which gave the actress second thoughts. She didn't have to think much, however, because Reagan broke his leg in a charity softball game, knocking him out of commission. Not that she was happy with his replacement, Howard Duff. She'd once called the actor arrogant and obnoxious, to his face. The first day of shooting, Duff had orchids sent to Lupino's dressing room with the note, to Ida Lupino from Howard Duff, whether you hate me or not. Stephen McNally ended up replacing Bruce Bennett as the husband from hell, and 21-year-old Peggy Dow, in only her second movie, was given a pivotal role. The ink had barely dried on her contract when Universal put her in four films in 1950, including the big hit, Harvey. Directed by Michael Gordon and photographed by the great William Daniels, here's a woman in Jeopardy thriller that's a cut above, Woman in Hiding. 